Tonight we're going to have a discussion on um, space colonization in the future and whether this is likely a good thing or a bad thing um, in general, what kinds of views we have on it and how we should um, affect it. So um, I can start with my views. Um, so um, on the one hand, a lot of people are interested in space colonization. Um, they want to expand the, the great things that they see in humanity to the stars. They want to spread life and knowledge and complexity. Um, many people want to have space colonies as a backup against um, catastrophes that might happen on a single planet. Um, and so um, to the extent that a lot of people care about this, um, we should give it some, some weight in our views. Um, my own um, opinion is that I also fear the risks that colonization would bring. It would allow for vastly more computational power as people harness um, planets and stars to um, produce Dyson swarms or whatever technology to um, create um, immense amounts of computational power. And um, this um, has the potential for great things, but also for um, not so great things. Um, for example, um, there would be a lot of um, computations done by a future civilization, um, some of which would include um, negative reinforcement learning, it might also include um, um, simulations of um, wildlife or other minds in various kinds of ways for science or um, other kinds of psychology experiments. Um, and some fraction of these would probably suffer greatly. Um, suffering is a pretty um, intrinsic part of um, biology or in this case, um, artificial life. Um, it's a very important um, feature of organisms to be able to suffer because that helps them avoid um, things that would um, harm their goals. And I don't expect suffering to um, vanish no matter how much we try. Um, it can certainly be a lot lower, but I expect that there will always be some amount of suffering um, that results from massive computational power. And just the fact that you have vastly more computational power means there will be vastly more total suffering. Um, so from that perspective, um, I'm also concerned about what space colonization would allow for. Um, so there are two ways that you might um, try to deal with this. One is to say we should not colonize space at all. Let's try to um, oppose the um, idea completely. Um, and if most of humanity would be okay with that, then that might be the best strategy. But in practice, most of humanity is in favor of colonization and even if that weren't the case, um, there are evolutionary pressures for those who want to colonize to do so. Um, it's like a niche in an ecosystem. Um, it's always going to be filled by whoever takes control. So the more realistic approach and probably the better approach in expectation is um, for us to um, work with the people who favor colonization to try to um, design safety measures against producing massive amounts of suffering. So for example, um, devising um, computational systems that um, even if they use negative reinforcement are um, more humane in our view, or maybe that use um, more positive reinforcement um, or other learning algorithms that we don't consider to be so closely related to the kind of suffering that we don't like. Um, similarly with simulations or experiments, um, it could be a situation much like we see with laboratory and animal experiments today where um, we can try to divine, devise substitutes um, and find ways to to minimize um, like the three R's of animal experimentation can also apply to um, sentient simulations that are done for science. Um, and so those kinds of measures might be able to reduce a lot of the suffering that a future civilization would include without curtailing the dreams that most humans have for the potential. Um, so it's both um, more realis realistic in, in the sense that we're not going to stop space colonization, we can mainly just shift the way it happens. And it also, um, is more um, accepting of the, the wishes that others have. And so there can be joint efforts um, by many different parties to um, work toward this kind of future. Um, even the, the people who advocate colonization generally don't want suffering. Um, although naively they may in practice say things like, I wish we could spread green, um, green um, plants and nature to the stars. In practice, they're not really thinking about the um, horrors of, of Darwinian life, predation, disease, hunger, etc. that that would entail. And probably if they could design animals to um, 
not experience such gruesome events, they would want to do so as well. So there seems to be room for collaboration between these different groups. Um, so I, I think we should um, push for a more humane future. Um, we don't have to support colonization, um, but we probably shouldn't actively oppose it and we should um, rather try to make what does happen more humane. Yes, I have to say broadly, uh, I uh, agree with Brian here. I mean, as a uh, Christian writer, C.S. Lewis uh, said uh, many decades ago, uh, God forbid that humans ever uh, escape uh, planet Earth to spread their iniquity elsewhere. Um, uh, whether we're actually going to do so, I think on balance this is probably the case, but it's completely beyond our technological powers at the moment. And it, I wouldn't say it's it's, I wouldn't say it's inevitable. After all, it's a long time since we actually visited uh, the moon. I think a lot of people's conception of uh, space exploration uh, radiating throughout the galaxy is shaped by Hollywood movies and memories of Star Trek. Uh, and if, as seems not implausible, we are alone in our gal galaxy, possibly alone within our cosmological horizon, and all we would actually discover in alien solar systems was l lumps of rock or gas giants, I think some of the uh, attraction would, would wear off. But, um, yeah, let's assume that... Uh, perhaps uh, next century and beyond, it is going to be, become technically feasible for intelligent, sentient life to spread uh, to other solar systems and eventually throughout the galaxy. Um, I think it's vital that we don't spread suffering in the process. Uh, I am, despite my temperamentally pessimistic nature, somewhat more optimistic uh, than Brian here, uh, in that I think... We are going to, in a sense, isolate the molecular signature of uh, unpleasant experience, any form of experience below hedonic zero. And once we have done so, we can, so to speak, quarantine it and make it off limits. And I think if, and it's a very big if, uh, we decide to phase out experience below hedonic zero uh, on Earth, uh, then uh, it's unlikely we would seek to replicate the horrors of Darwinian life by terraforming other solar systems. But, of course, I could be totally wrong about this prediction. There are too many variables, and certainly at the moment, if we were to contemplate uh, uh, space colonisation, sadly we would replicate all too many of the horrors of, 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 of life here on planet Earth today. Um, what do you think? Do you think we should uh, be aiming for uh, uh, colonising the galaxy, or is it best that we, uh, uh, yes, uh, stay on it, stay on our own solar system? Um, well, I, ideally, it would be nice to have more of the the things we value, um, but depending on what the potential risks are, it might not, uh, it might, it may or or may not be be worth going into, depending on what you value and depending on what you think the risks are and so on. Like, um, like yeah, the, the, the strategies depend maybe a lot on your meta, meta ethical viewpoints. For example, like, like as Brian said, like we are probably all very negative or negative leaning utilitarian. So a pre, uh, prima facie, it seems like we should uh, not try to colonize the galaxy, not work on um, super intelligent AI um, colonizing the galaxy. Um, but it depends. <coughs> I think it depends critically um, where, whether the, when we build friendly AI, for example, like y Yudkowsky, like it, it probably implies suffering uh, a lot. But, um, and but if this approach go, goes right, it's probably better than um, yeah, friendly AI. AI is, of course, implies um, much less suffering than, for example, a paper clipper probably because a paper paper clipper would also um, do um, create maybe simu simulations that suffer or um, like as Brian uh, said, like create universes, lab universes. Um, so there's probably more suffering in a paper clipper than from a friendly AI. But if you look at um, mind space of possible AIs, for example, and friendly AIs maybe here, then a, then a 
AI that is very close to, to a friendly AI in Mindspace, for example, that has all the values that the humans are, but just one value is, for example, in, inverse. It, it, it's not, it doesn't want to reduce suffering as we normal humans are, but it wants to maximize suffering. Then this is slightly different from friendly AI in Mindspace. Unfriendly AI is very, very bad, much, much worse than a paper clipper. But um, so there, there are some people who argue that from a negative leaning uh, utilitarianism perspective, trying to create friendly AI is even um, an expected utility worse than just create, trying to create a, a, a normal AI without safety measures because then yeah, it's a high likelihood that you just reach some point in mind, mind space that's completely off from, from friendly AI. So it will only um, create some, some suffering, but not so much. Um, but yeah, the, the, the question is, like there are also like some um, points in mind space near to a friendly AI that are also pretty good. For example, a friendly AI that has all our values but just doesn't care about boredom or something like this. And it would just, yeah, for example, like Yudkowsky fears that it would happen, uh, something like this. Like it just simulate all humans and just um, like they play one video game. He has this example, like they play one video game and just the best moment of this video game, they see always this win uh, screen or something for the rest of the universe, then they would be super happy. Like for him, it's bad, but for like, yeah, most negatively meaning the utility handles, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. My guess is the, um, the um, friendly AIs that go wrong are not too probable. Um, so in terms of the expected value, of the paper clippers versus trying for a friendly AI, it's not it's not obviously um, worse to have a friendly AI. I'm per currently undecided on exactly which would be better, um, and although I think that many of the things that would conduce for friendly AI, like greater reflection, greater cooperativeness in the future, um, having more time to think about these things, um, are good for other reasons, namely that they allow for more positive sum um, compromise arrangements and um, in general allow for people to find problems and, and solve them and so on. Um, I think um, um, as far as the, um, whether the suffering is inevitable, there are certain kinds of suffering that may be pretty hard to get rid of, like with if you need a really high fidelity simulation um, to study um, science or like um, learn about biology or physics or whatever, then it may be pretty hard to avoid um, the suffering because that's just um, like if you try to edit out the suffering then the simulation is no longer exactly correct. Um, but there are a lot of cases where it seems potentially possible to eliminate. Um, if you just need crude simulations you could potentially cut out some of the, the worst parts. Similarly with suffering subroutines there's a broad space of um, possibilities for how you can build um, learning algorithms and some we might regard as much less morally um, unpleasant than others. Um, so I think there's probably a very wide range of um, possible amounts of suffering in the future based on um, like how much we try to shape it in a good way. Um, so um, beyond that, um, friend, like um, the, the existence of goal preservation or a singleton in general in the future could be a pretty good thing on balance because um, then you have less um, conflict and like um, historically periods with um, um, more centralization and more of a singleton structure have been more peaceful in general lead to more flourishing and so on. So um, just from that perspective, it could also be important to have um, a singleton like structure of the time that you would achieve with friendly AI. Like if you have, um, or, or the kind of at least research that goes into friendly AI, if you have just um, like black box AIs that um, are developed, then there's no guarantee that they, they stay consistent and they might even devolve into, um, there might be rebellions or whatever, whatever within their own, um, their own control structures. Although I would assume that even if you developed a pretty black box AI, it would soon try to develop goal preservation because that's very important for its um, goal achievements. Um, but at least in the interim, things could be messy. So. Um, it seems plausible that um, goal preservation might be a good good thing to work towards. Although I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the best thing um, that remains to be seen.
Yes, I mean, from a, a strict negative utilitarian perspective, I think one would only have any kind of obligation to go into, or possible obligation to go into uh, uh, space and uh, investigate the galaxy if one thinks there's a need for cosmic rescue missions. Now, as you know, I'm very sceptical uh, that uh, life does exist elsewhere in the galaxy, but this is probably a minority opinion, or at least uh, uh, let's say that uh, astrobiologists, as they optimistically call themselves, are uh, uncertain on the matter. We will probably know within the next few decades, I would guess, not, less as, not least as we understand more about the the origin of life uh, here on Earth. I mean, if, for instance, we discovered that life uh, had independently originated elsewhere uh, in the solar system, this would be very strong presumptive evidence that there will be uh, life, uh, Darwinian life, uh, elsewhere in the galaxy. And, yeah, this would then, I think, we would have uh, an obligation to uh, go out uh, and uh, rescue and, uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, rework Darwinian uh, e ecosystems to phase out involuntary suffering if, and it's a very big if, we think that the rewards uh, out outweigh the potential risks. Um, yeah, uh, unlike Brian, I don't believe in uh, uh, the, the possibility that of, of digital sentience, so our worries are very different there. Mm. Yeah, from my perspective, um, cosmic rescue missions are unlikely to be a substantial factor in the calculation just because um, digital sentience is vastly more efficient than biological.